UK, 25% of households own a dog, but just how many of these owners actually train their dog? According to Australia Dog Survey, over 126,000 dogs are being picked up every year. This equates 345 stray dogs being found every day. Abandoning dogs can make a lifelong impact on their behaviour. 700,000 people a year are estimated to be bitten by a dog in England. Many of these cases are down to poor training and stability issues within the dog. The annual cost of NHS within these injuries tallies up to around 30 million. I'm going to be investigating dog attacks, the many factors surrounding as to why these happen and who's truly to blame. Cases such as the unexpected attack Sarah Barron suffered whilst at a family member's home in 2010. An unprovoked Staffordshire Bull Terrier pounced on top of Sarah, snarling. Sarah's face was left shredded and misplaced, covered in blood with a half-torn lip. This resulted in 50 stitches in her face. Another case is that of Denise Davis, a PA consultant from Reading, who, while attempting to calm a friend's Rottweiler, was knocked to the ground and milled on both arms, leading to a total of 32 teeth marks that required a trip to the hospital. Both of these attacks show the sheer unpredictability of dogs. However, there are a number of other surrounding elements of dogs that result in their actions and attacks. We caught up with some members of the public to catch their views on the subject. So what breed is your dog? My dog is a uh, half chocolate Labrador, half German Pointer. It's a cockapoo. I'm not kidding, that's actually quite cool. Okay. <laughs> it's a Labrador. How long have you had him or her? Nine years yesterday. Um, four or five years. Uh, do you leave it for like long periods of time, so, like when you go out or like family go out? Like uh, probably about two, three hours max. My mum likes to keep a check on her. Okay. Um, how often do you take it for walks? Um, every day. Never walked him in my life. Never? No. no. Do you train your dog in any way? Not particularly, no, just teach them how to sit and how to be polite and all of that. No barking, but doesn't listen. Do you think there's any specific breeds of dog that you think are dangerous or you don't let them interact with? Well, I, these big, some of these big uh, fighting dogs, but we don't see them out here, so I don't I really see anything like that. Okay. Most attacks can be down to a number of reasons. These vary by the breed and the incident. However, six factors can always be questioned when dealing with an attack. The owner, and not forgetting, if necessary, the handler are two key essentials when dealing with a dog behaviour. It is essential for an owner to include proper management and control within their dog. For example, no dog should be left alone with a small child, irrelevant to how trained or socialised. If the child gets bitten, in this scenario, it was always the owner's fault. The handler is very similar to that of the owner. The responsibility of the dog lies in their hands. It is essential that the handler has full control and understanding of the dog before interacting with others. And if the same situation occurred, that would then be the handler's fault. We made a visit to a local kennels to catch up with these who deal with dogs on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so tell us about your role here. Okay, I'm the manager here, so obviously overseeing all the staff as well as like seeing the dogs in and out, um, like health checks on the dogs, I do grooming here as well, so all the yeah. keeping and stuff bathing the dogs. Are there any specific safety precautions that you put into place when a dangerous breed comes in? Um, well, I mean, it depends what your class is a dangerous breed, obviously. We are over probably only cautious with the staff these in English Bull Terriers um, just because if they are going to attack the yeah. dogs it's going to be a lot worse and yeah. you know, a Labrador attacking the other dogs but all the new dogs that we have coming we are always a bit wary of them at first until we get to know them a bit. So. What do you think triggers a dog's aggression? Uh, we have dogs that come that are food aggressive, we have dogs that are toy aggressive, um, yeah. just poor socialisation as puppies. Um, I mean, you know, some of them, just when they come into kennels, they're just scared. Finally, do you think it's the dog or the owner? Uh, I think a lot of people don't socialise their dogs properly, don't take things off the dogs when yeah. they should. And, you know, there are certain breeds that are definitely have got aggression in them, not yeah. just bull breeds like Shih Tzus, Westies, yeah. typical terriers, they've all got it in them. But obviously it's just people need to socialise them from when they're puppies. Another two factors are that of the medical history of the dog and of course the victim. For example, the person who is bitten when a situation occurs. 
Dog medical histories can cause a huge impact on the instigation of the attack. If there is something obscure, like a brain tumour or something more obvious, for example, the dog is injured or in pain, like we do as people, we can get uncomfortable and snappy with those around us. This goes the same for dogs. Secondly, the victim. All too often, people claim that the dog was not provoked. But what must be remembered, this is from a human perspective. The dog may have felt threatened and even if the person was involved not aware of that. This can sometimes be the case. However, we do not possess the ability to communicate with dogs, so the answer will never be touched. It is simply down to us ensuring proper understanding and training with our dogs. Our second interview was with a professional veterinarian that had some crucial information for our report. I remember um, there was a Rottweiler that uh, actually chased me and um, <laughs> that was quite uh, exciting. I had to jump onto a freezer to escape it, but if they're very nervous that can be um, that they might be more prone to attack defensively because they're feeling so nervous, so you take that into account. Um, if they're obviously, you know, snarling at you initially, then you say to the owner, look, you know, please can you put this muzzle on? Um, if they're very, very aggressive, you might even suggest to the owner that they give the, the dog um, some medications, a tablet, before they even come to the practice. Sharpays can be very friendly, but they can be have a side of snapping, as can Akitas, Rottweilers, German Shepherds particularly, you have to be careful with those. Um, what else? I mean, pit, pit bulls, obviously, by law. Um, yeah. really dangerous, but it, it can be heartbreaking as well because sometimes pit bull like dogs um, can be very friendly and um, I've had experiences where that there has been some regulations made whereby all pit bull types um, you know should be destroyed and, and it's very heartbreaking because yeah. you know some dogs you can't generalize it. The owner needs to take responsibility for their animal um, they should you know, if the dog is at all aggressive, and I mean, most dogs should just not be, I think, trusted in terms of, I think, especially with small children, nobody should ever 100% trust their own dog. And then if they're out and about, they should have their dog on a lead or muzzled if, you know, if, unless they know that their dog is absolutely well socialised and good with the dog. And also within their own home, they need to make sure that the dog is fenced in and not able to get out to make attacks as well. So um, there, there have been stricter. Um, laws made I think this last week um, where people can be actually put in prison for longer sentences. The final things to remember are the genetics of the dog and most obviously lack of socialisation and training. Genetics is regarding dogs that have a predisposition to biting. In explanation this being those who breed dogs with a known behaviour problem, nervousness or aggression. There is also the issue of rage syndrome which is still not understood by many. The lack of training during the formative weeks this being when the dog is still with the breeder is essential. You are about to find out from Nick Blaney, another veterinarian who does a lot of work for the Kennel Club and is particularly knowledgeable about animal behaviour. As vets you, you get used to expecting certain behaviour patterns from certain breeds and there are certain breeds that we will treat with particular caution in the consulting room. Um, but it's not just about the aggression of the breed, uh, though, I mean, it's not just about size either, because Jack Russell's can be quite difficult to handle. Yeah. Um, other than that, obviously, the breeze with the, the pit bull type, the Staffordshire type, um, these breeds we do treat with particular caution because they are behaviourally somewhat different to some of the more acknowledged pet breeds, such as Labradors. With regard to retraining, mm. there are some breeds where training is more difficult. But also the most important thing is that training must be done at the right stage of life and therefore as they get older retraining becomes more and more difficult. Dogs' behaviour patterns are formed as a, as a, 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 a melange between their, their inherent behaviour patterns, their instinctive inherited behaviour patterns and the way that they've been trained and the experiences that they've had when they're growing up. What's really important is the, is the period under 20 weeks. There are some very important experiences that a dog must receive then, otherwise the dog becomes uh, much more fearful of those experiences in later, in, in later life. If you go back to the wolf, the wolf will accept certain experiences early in life and then they become more fearful. Now the way that we've been breeding our various breeds is actually to try and reduce the fearfulness, but that instinct is still hardwired in the dog. So what happens in the first 20 weeks and then beyond, it's also important, but the early stage of life, the, the puppyhood and the adolescence will make the dog of the future. 
The behaviour of the dog is affected by every aspect of its conscious experiences. The dog's mind is formed by the world in which it lives. And so the, the, the way the owner treats it, the circumstances in which it's kept, all these things will contribute to whether the dog grows up a confident dog, relaxed, free from fear within its environment, or whether it suffers from stresses, because most aggression is actually because of bad training. Clearly there are breeds where aggression is also built in and sadly we have breeds that are bred to attack, to fight each other. Now those dogs are programmed to do that, there's not much you can do about it and that's why they make such appalling pets. Yeah. But a lot of other dogs, the, the, the difficult behaviour patterns that we see are not the dog's fault, it's the way they've been brought up. It's people treating them as if they were babies and they're not, they're dogs. They react differently, they interpret and filter the world differently to children. I blame the owners. I blame the owners entirely. The dogs are our responsibility. It's, it's a privilege to own a dog, not a right. People are getting the wrong sort of dogs. They don't do their homework. They're ill-informed. They pick dogs because of what they look like, when in fact you should pick a dog because your lifestyle will suit the requirements of that particular dog. Dogs that are socialised when they're younger are happy with other dogs. My two Labradors, which were hugely socialised when they were young, they love other dogs. It's never a problem at all. Uh, but you see other people when you're out walking and they pick their dog up or they've got them on the end of the lead and the dog is going mad to get off the lead because the dog actually, as I say, dogs are fearful of things they don't understand. So when they're adults, something comes along they're not sure about, their first reaction is going to be hostility. Now if you go back to nature, that's probably a, probably a good approach, be suspicious in the first place. But what we've tried to do is to train our dogs not to be suspicious. So most of the problems are to do with owners who don't understand and haven't taken the full responsibility of training their dogs properly. It's never the dog's fault. And neither is it the breed fault. It's the deed, not the breed, that matters. Dog attacks can be down to a number of reasons. Each individual attack varies on a number of factors as mentioned. Simply enough, there is no single blame to be dealt. It's the accumulative elements that make up the blame and the reasons behind it. So it's a good vibe from me and a very jolly good vibe from Roxy. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter using the hashtag who's to blame and let us know about your opinions on the subject and any incidences you may have had with dangerous dogs.